What's up, Shred Sexies and future Shred Lords, metal masters of the recording genre? I got to do a whole ton of solos later on this afternoon to get my Vigilamus Diary stuff done <clears throat> so I can get it out to you. It's a 10-minute opener with uh, dialogue and setting up my new concept album. It's going to be absolutely mental. It sounds killer. So <clears throat> got to be working on that this afternoon, a little sneak peek action, but... I also got a lot of questions, of course, constantly getting questions about recording and whatnot. Listen, I'm not an expert at any sort of stretch of the imagination, but I've learned a lot about recording over the past 10 years, if you will. And I just want to share some basic ideas with you. That's it. Always be experimenting. I think I've revised my rhythm guitar template and every template in this recording session and every recording session for that matter, uh, like a hundred times. <clears throat> Always be experimenting, sort of trying to use new recording techniques and all the rest of this stuff. But let's just get into this. No more yip yap because the second half of this video, if you want to skip to it right now, you'll see there's a little break screen, uh, is just going to be me shutting up and just mixing the guitars and then sort of getting the, the rest of this mix all teed up, which is the bass and my rhythm guitar and the, and the drums, which I did earlier. And there, of course, is Pierre's guitars. And as you can see, I've broke up all these instruments there's a half dirty guitar over here and a clean guitars and <clears throat> stuff like that. There's the bass guitar. There's all the keyboards. Uh, here's the entire vocal mix down here in pink. Then I got some lead guitar stuff, some spoken word stuff, right? And then up at the top here, I have all of these, what I call master tracks. These are just when I'm done editing this information down here. I render it out and I drag it up here and I do some more processing and whatnot and send it down to this parallel processing and in certain instances the effects bus down here in orange which I'm not going to be doing obviously with rhythm guitars unless you're doing it a Devin Townsend kind of thing and then you might want to have uh, you know this bus on here like he does but <clears throat> this one right here this parallel bus is going to be if you haven't started doing this where you take your tracks after you're finished with them and do like a bussing of them down into a bunch of parallel tracks that have different effects on them. In this case, you can see I'm using this uh, saturation unit here called the oven. It's a fantastic unit. And yes, of course, more saturation with this saturate one. This is adding more high end. I'm doing this cool little trick here. I'm using this EQ, but I run it through a compressor to beef it up first, <clears throat> make it sound fat or hit harder. Uh, I'm using this great one. It's a passive EQ in this case, mostly for guitars and stuff like that. But I basically run the entire mix through it, except for the vocals. And uh, it's awesome. This is a really great plugin, right? Very subtle. All these things are being used incredibly subtly. Uh, this is an LLS trick that I got from uh, Jason Joshua. I don't know if you know who that is. He's a prodigy from uh, Dave Pensato and stuff. He's, you know, multi bazillion selling record modern producer but he uses this on bass and bass guitars and synths and stuff and i was like it probably sound pretty badass on drums of course nails it <clears throat> so i ran it through this is another saturation trick you might be seeing a theme here you're going to see a lot more of it saturation is the single most least talked about thing that's the most important in terms of metal and rock to be able to get your mixes sounding absolutely devastating and crushing the biggest issue with most mixes is a lack of saturation. <clears throat> Get that in too. So that's where that comes from, just on the drum zone in this case. And last but not least, I run the mix through this Better Maker, which in my opinion, notice I've just got it pinned here for the bandwidth, is the ultimate plugin, if you will, with respect to getting stereo widening. Don't ask. Plus, it's got some tweakability <clears throat> in terms of these two EQ sections here that uh, just add a whole nother dimension to the mix. Mm, nice. I love it when a plan comes together. Obviously on my two bus here, I've got this Shadow Hills compressor. Nothing is being hit very hard. You're barely moving the needle here. And <clears throat> this is another secret weapon. I just, I've had this for a while, but I started using it on the two bus and I'm like, there it is. That's its home. And I've seen other obviously super high end producers use this all over the place. But for me, on the two bus, this is just an absolutely killer EQ here. So I'm just doing a little bit more sort of like sculpting, if you will. And just last but not least, just, you know, volume reference and all this kind of garbage for when I want to <clears throat> uh, basically bounce it out so that they're all relative, if you will, 
in volume, and I'm not taking a guess if it says... I mix to around minus 12 here, Luffs, the integrated, on all the songs. And then when I bring them into the mastering stage, that seems to solve almost all the problems with little sort of subtle variations in the, you know, in the volume between the songs. <clears throat> okay, so that's it. I do the initial recording. You can see I got four lefts here. I record all the left guitars on this side. I do all the right guitars here. I like to do small snippets of stuff Right? I do not like to do a two-minute sort of like recording binge. Okay? Negative. And notice I'm not going crazy with the volume here with respect to how loud the guitars actually are when I'm starting recording out of my Helix. Okay? So <clears throat> it's, it's not ballistic. You don't want to be way up here negative. Bad idea because you're going to run out of headroom very quickly and be like, whoops, I made a mistake. And then I just do small, whatever, 10, 15 second chunks and get it done. <clears throat> this is not because I'm like, I couldn't do this in whatever, you know, in, in one shot. It's because I did this in 15 minutes and I didn't spend an hour trying to record this 30 seconds worth of music or one minute's worth of music, right? I had it done in 15 minutes because I was just like, boom, 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 boom. Finished. And that's a great way to sort of, you know, get your recordings done. It's no fun when you get stuck in the grind. And so look for small mini hacks that just basically make your workload more manageable. Bada bing, bada boom. All of a sudden you're getting songs banged out in two hours and not two days. <clears throat> Once I've got my raw sort of guitar recordings slammed into the DAW here, I move into this dynamic and EQ stage. <clears throat> First, I control the dynamics and do some, basically, some uh, dynamic EQing here. Basically, mostly controlling the low end and the mid-range here, okay? We're going to go through this, obviously, in the second half. And this is a secret weapon you need, you absolutely need. It's, there's no negotiation. A super high-end EQ like this, subtractive EQ, I call them, <clears throat> or digital EQ, or whatever you want to call it, okay? This is like a workhorse, obviously. You're going to be using this everywhere on everything. But the fact that these ones, there's this Kirkhoff one, there's the, uh, obviously the ProFab filter is really popular. There's probably other ones too. I don't care what brand you are. They're at least 100 or 150 bucks. Like 100 American if they're on sale <clears throat> or 150 Canadian and then they go up from there. But this is also a like an absolute necessity. One of these, uh, whatever, third generation EQs. And you'll see why once I start dialing this bad boy in like that <clears throat> with respect to uh, the guitars and whatnot, you'll be like, oh my God, the difference is absolutely massive. See, I just kind of pull it over here and you'll see I'm, I'm chopping off massive amounts. I used to do about 10K. Now I'm all the way down into like the seven and a half kind of like high end seven to eight kind of situation. And you're like, wow, holy smokes, because you'll hear this absolutely mental high end hiss on the guitar up here. This is the stuff that I got from, I think it's Christian Cole Audio Cult. Shout out to uh, some really great information there. And you just sort of scan through here. You'll see me do it and just, you'll be like, oh my God. <clears throat> Most people don't understand. They're like, you're making the guitar sound like thinner and weaker and stuff comparably to the original run. And that's the, that's the magic, <clears throat> right? I, I'm going up here. The food chain, I'm going to go into this double DSing now. I'm DSing some, some, some skanky frequencies from the top and I'm DSing some mud from the bottom. This is an Andrew Sheps trick. Okay, this one here, <clears throat> this is an Andy Sneep trick where he does this on his metal guitars, right? And of course, I'm just further EQing it. I don't want, this thing is not good enough to be able to do the final subtractive EQ on this. And I've got a few other points that I can just turn on uh, to do the final stuff. You'll see me do that too, right? So that's that. But this is, again, an, uh, you know, the Andrew Sheps trick where you're basically double DSing, which is why he has this in his plugin probably, and he probably does it all over the place for vocals and drums. Great trick. This is an absolutely phenomenal trick. Plus, if you're doing vocals, I, I, I do this double DSing trick now, and I add a super slight amount of compression here at this stage and a little bit of limiting, 
And honestly, it made a huge difference. I mean, I'm just touching it, kissing it, not it's just like breathing on it. <clears throat> and it just made a massive difference down the down the sort of plug-in chain. Then I move into my plug-in here. Of course, this is channel strip. I have three favorite ones. There's this guy. <clears throat> Whoops, let's go here. <coughs> oh my god, I hit the bong early this morning and I'm just dying. This one I just got from the Helios. This is an amazing plug-in. It's all passive and stuff uh, based off 70s technology. Absolutely phenomenal. So that's another one I love on, on, on stringed instruments. And then finally, I've got this guy here. Uh, also, uh, I'm actually going to say this one. Uh, the other one's kind of like, you know, it's the SSL. It's classic. But <clears throat> if you're looking for one that's very specific to, you know, an actual guitar sound, this Amec here is the 9099 is also an incredibly powerful and great all-around EQ. I've been using it as much because I prefer the coloration, meaning the kind of saturation and color and all the rest of that stuff you get from this one on my guitar sound. But you could go either way, and it's amazing. And of course, <clears throat> I'm doing this double saturation trick. You might be noticing I'm saturating the living crap out of everything. And it made a massive difference to keeping the volume down, but the signal getting progressively louder and more crushing. That's what you want. Not loud, but huge, like beefy, muscular, where you're just like, rah, rage mode. <clears throat> and this is how you do it. Saturation here. Look at it. You'll see, I reset it, but you'll see me start to pump this gain like this. Once we get into the mix stuff immediately. Right at the beginning, I'm like, oh, there you go. Boom, slam it up there to like two or three. And you'll see the guitar sound just explode in volume and in size and girth. And you'll be like, yeah, damn, yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't even think about that. Neither did I. <laughs> and I'll actually turn down this input gain here, obviously, right? So once I'm, I start cranking this, I do my gain staging a bit down here, right? So, And of course, again, I'm getting into this saturation. It's just a preamp. More saturation. Drives it. I've got a little bit more EQ here. And a little bit more EQ shaping with this high low pass filter. And then, yes, I'm doing another one with this Poltec. Okay, so I'm actually coming out of this preamp and then going directly into the Poltec. Notice the entire chain. I sort of like filter out, do all the subtractive EQ until I get to this channel strip. I shape my sound and then I shape it a bit more, make it a bit bigger with more saturation with this bad boy. And then I drive it a little bit more and shape the sound a bit more with this. And then I can be like, do I want to put it in mid mode? Do I want to put it in side mode? Or I just want to have it straight up stereo. Again, it adds each one of these little sort of like levels of control will absolutely create a whole new dimension to your guitar sound. <clears throat> I didn't think anything about it. But then when I started to do it like this in the series kind of idea, I noticed how much more bigger and more impactful the guitars is to the point where I was like, I have to turn this stuff down. And then when I'm happy, I basically right click and I render it out. You'll see this. And I move the file up here into this one where, of course, I'm using this widening trick again on the guitars. Yes, I widen the whole mix and I widen the guitars and the bass or not the bass, sorry, and the drums and the vocals and stuff like that individually. Plus, there's more EQ. In this case, I'm using this strictly as subtractive. It works awesome as a subtractive EQ. You can just suck out a few nasty frequencies here and it really just crisps it up and makes it sound beautiful. And of course, more beefage. <clears throat> you want more high end? Nails it. There it is. And you can attenuate. So you can use, the, again, the Sheps trick with respect to the Poltex. By driving the boost and the attenuation at the same time, you can actually make it more clear and fatter at the same time. Don't ask. So <clears throat> that's a great one. And of course, once I get finished that, I render out one more time. And it goes through this last preamp before, yes, <clears throat> I get into all of the parallel processing. I set it down to the oven and the saturation and the townhouse Amec combination into the Nautilus. I actually call it warmer because it, I did it specifically with, with the guitars and the bass in mind. And then finally into, yes, the second widener which just gives it a little bit of balance. And this gives me the control to be like, I only want a tiny little bit of this into the, into the overall mixed widened. But in terms of like this, I want to just crank the oven. So, you know, like it, it, this is like paint brushes, if you will, for a painter. And they offer all kinds of different little subtle textures to sort of give your mix 
more depth and clarity and and sound, you know, variations and thickness and all kinds of good stuff. And all you have to do really is just start to play around with the, the idea of just running it is. Of course, you can see I've got all of these coming as inputs, the drum master send, the bass master send. And again, you can see I've already got it <clears throat> already set up with respect to the previous ones. And realistically speaking, these will all be normally just set to zero like this. And as I bring them in kind of situation, um, then uh, I'm just doing it from up here because it makes more sense. Obviously, I just go to the bass end and I'm like, here we go. You know, oops, sorry, wrong one. <clears throat> you got to go to the bass master send here. And this lets me basically dial them in as I want to. So I normally just set them to zero, get myself the stem set up, and then start bussing them down to the parallel processing and adding that in at the very end. And you get the whole enchilada. So that's basically the whole process. Capture the raw tracks, do your subtractive EQ, <clears throat> get into your actual additive EQ now, add saturation. In this case, I'm using these Lindell models. They sound absolutely killer. Render out, <clears throat> jump up, add a little bit more widening to taste, do a bit more subtractive EQ or additive EQ in a global sense. You're no longer getting into it real tight. That's already done. And last but not least, uh, you know, I love this crank function on this. This just makes your guitar get instantly huge. This plugin is awesome. Plus the high end shelf on this is absolutely delish. Okay, so, and of course the idea that you can then just instantly grab this low filter here is really nice too. It really absolutely helps tighten up the sound after you start to make the small subtle changes there. Trust me, this little around the 40 range in here, man, boom, does that ever really make it sound sweet. Right, and of course, then I go down <clears throat> and I pipe it all in and I just start dialing these bad boys in as I'm playing the whole mix. So I'll start with the guitars. It might even be fairly, they might even be quieter in the beginning. And then as I start to dial these in, you'll see the guitar just pops right up and just becomes absolutely savage. So no more yip yap. <clears throat> Let's just end that part right there. We'll get into it. I've already got everything pre-set up, so to speak. So we're just going to get right into the mix here. Let's go.